Oh uh, yeah, so fireweed zinc, uh, as Eric said, we just put out our new mineral resource estimate uh, 10 days ago. Um, and those who were at our last uh, talk here at MIF in November, um, probably remember we were calling the asset substantial and now I'm being bold and I'm calling it world class. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about why I feel comfortable saying that, why this is not just a substantial asset. You know, I think um, in uh, mineral parlance, uh, before I thought we had a rhino and now I'm convinced we have an elephant. Um, and it's getting bigger. Uh, so the usual disclaimers, um, probably the most uh, relevant disclaimer here, uh, you know, is that past performance is not an indicator of future performance. We've had a hell of a chart since the last MIF. Um, we're up 120% since November. Um, but what I want to talk about in this is, is why we're not done yet and why actually when you look at our new mineral resource estimate, we're actually cheaper really at this price than we were before. Um, so yeah, I have a thing I've already kind of talked a little bit on this, but um, uh, I'll talk about our, our resource update. I'm not gonna talk about the zinc market this time, um, where we're gonna grow the tons, um, and why you should take a good look at us. Uh, quickly on the company, so we IPO'd last year, we got 17.8 million shares outstanding, uh, fully diluted, including the earn-in on uh, the property, which gives us 100%, we'd have 27 million shares outstanding. Uh, and that's where the property is. So it's the locate the McMillan Pass in uh, Yukon Territory, northeast of Ross River. This is on the Kennel Road, a government maintained road in uh, Yukon Territory. Um, projects uh, pretty um, ha have a storied history, starting in 1951, um, all the way up to now. Um, you know, th these projects just keep getting bigger. And you can see our resource at the bottom there, which I'll get a dive into depth. But uh, you know, 11.2 million tons at 9.6 percent equivalent indicated and 39 and a half million tons at 10% is the equivalent for the inferred resource. Um, so if th this is why I feel comfortable calling this a world class. Uh, everyone has a different uh, classification system for what, what constitutes a world class deposit. Um, one of the ones I've heard is greater than 50 million tons at greater than 7% equivalent. Uh, so we've got more than 50 million tons and we've got about 40% higher grade than 7% than equivalent. Um, so we are, we are now a big boy. Uh, and that's the team, um, so myself, uh, John Robbins, who I think a lot of people would be familiar with, uh, fantastic success in the industry, uh, George Kozinski, who's here, um, great geologist and, and a huge benefit to the company, Richard Heidekevich, our other founder, a huge success, uh, successful career on Wall Street uh, in metals trading, and Dan Rognes and Adrian Rothwell uh, rounding out our, our board. Um, so this, this is the details of the resource, breaking it down into Tom and Jason. Uh, Tom remains the, the bigger of the two. Um, but they're both uh, substantial. I think uh, most companies would love to have just one of these and, and we've got them both. These are about six kilometers apart. Um, so in terms of contained metal, they're a really substantial amount of contained metal. Um, this, this should be a very uh, compelling uh, project for, for um, uh, companies to look at if they're looking for a strategic size asset. Uh, and I would note that it's, it's the, the grade, you know, really that matters there. Um, you know, it's not just about building contained metal. You, you can there's lots of ways to, to build low-grade contained metal, but the, the question is always, is it mineable? Um, and so when you look at the, the, the range of cutoffs we have here, you know, if you don't think that our, our NSR base is there, which I would know that NSR is net of transportation, so if you're concerned about logistics of the project, the, the NSR we calculated on this is, is net of transportation. If, if you think that um, that should be higher, we still have lots of tons at higher, at higher cutoffs. This is the uh, Tom deposit. So uh, the two particular parts of interest for Tom are Tom West and Tom East. Tom West is the giant. It's about half of the whole project uh, between Tom and Jason. Um, the the um, Tom East is of real interest in terms of economics. It comes to surface there. It's about uh, three quarters of a million ton indicated at 20% zinc equivalent and about one and a half million tons inferred at 27% zinc equivalent. Um, so if you're thinking economics, if you're thinking, okay, so, so how do I front load my economics for this project? Well, geez, you've got that zone there that comes to service that you can start your mine life with uh, that is a spectacular grade. Uh, and on the Jason side, you have two main zones, Jason Main, uh, which is a zinc dominated system, um, higher grade in the middle. Uh, it's interpreted as vent distal, so that's why you see the high zinc to lead ratio and then Jason South, which is interpreted as the vent proximal and vent complex. Um, we didn't do any drilling in Jason South in 2017. We will this year. 
Um, that's an area where you get these spectacular silver grades. When you're at these uh, vents, uh, you can find north of, of six, seven, eight hundred, even a thousand ppm silver um, in intersections there. So it's big, but how do we make it bigger? And, and the first way is we step out. Uh, you know, the incredible thing about Tom West is as big as it is, it's not really sterilized in any direction. Uh, going north, which is to the left and, and the image you see here, uh, the grade is not um, really compelling. So you could step it out that way, and I'm sure you could add tons. It's, it's not something we'd really we'd target. But uh, you look going south, um, that is some spectacular grade there uh, in what you see in the sort of center that's circled. Um, that has not been adequately stepped out, uh, that's just waiting there for growth. Uh, so being able to add, uh, you know, and everything that's purple is, is north of 13-ish percent uh, zinc equivalent. So, um, you know, being able to grow tons easily at that sort of grade is, is incredible. And then the hole at the bottom right there, um, you know, I've talked about this hole before. This was drilled in 1990. This was a big fat step out back in the day. Um, you know, 14 meters of 14 percent zinc and a, a little bit of lead. Um, that was in the, in the historic resource that we were talking about until 10 days ago, but is not in this current resource. Um, so there's areas of this, believe it or not, as much tons as we gained, there are areas that we lost tons um, and that are waiting for us to drill and fill that in. The, the resource geologist who did this rightfully looked at that hole and said it's, it's too far out. It's, it's 200 meters from the next nearest hole. But that's a target for us to, to add that, that spectacular grade and additional tonnage in. So Jason, uh, same sort of story, you know, these, these two sides, Maine on the right there and south to the left, um, they're interpreted as two limbs of a syncline which have not yet been joined. You know, that's some deep drilling and that would be later in mine life, but that's tonnage there just, just waiting to be found. Um, and interesting, again, circled on the left, uh, that, that's part of the feeder complex. You can see the grades there, you know, almost 14 meters of 7% zinc, 5% uh, lead and, and almost 120 grams silver. Um, that's not in the resource. It wasn't the historic one, but there wasn't just quite the drill density we needed there to get it into the new resource. So again, we do a little bit of drilling there next year and we get those high grade tons added right back in. And then beyond that, so you've got these great zones that are already massive and world class and, and yet we have this large property that is hugely perspective for more zones. Uh, we already know there's at least one more feeder system in the property, the end zone, which is not fully understood and of which we're the first group to ever own both sides of the property boundary that contain it. Um, you know, is that a third SEDEX system in the project? Um, are there more SEDEX systems there? Mo most of the property is buried under recent sediments or uh, Devonian age sediments which are, are younger than the mineralization. So the opportunity and challenge for us is how do we look through these sediments? How do we find uh, new mineralized packages? And you know, if, if as big as we are, we're, we're stepping out and growing the known zones, but if we start finding new zones, then you start growing the resource in quantum leaps. And this is just kind of quickly illustrating um, that the area between Tom and Jason, the light blue there being the hanging wall unit. So everything at the bottom of that unit is potentially mineralized. Uh, not all of it will be, but it gives you an idea that the, the scale of area we can be looking at. So why buy us? You know, we're up 120%. Are we fully valued? And the answer is an emphatic no, we are not. Um, um, this shows our resource compared to a, a peer group. Uh, I think it's a pretty good peer group. Um, shows that despite all our move recently, and that, that uh, 39 million I think is actually, uh, I did that this morning. So this is not a, you know, even with the massive bump we got today, um, that's, that's in there. Um, if you take these numbers and look at, say, an EV per, per pound of zinc equivalent in the ground, um, we're not average amongst this group, and we should not be average amongst this group because we are not an average project. We are the cheapest on an EV per zinc, pound of zinc equivalent basis, um, which, is, which is not a situation that will, will uh, stay for long. Um, so uh, with that in mind, uh, Catalyst coming forward, we will have a PEA which is going to really demonstrate the, the economics of this project. That'll come out probably early Q2, possibly late March, but uh, don't get your hopes up. Um, and I think, you know, the incredible thing is, is that when you demonstrate uh, that you have margin on tons that are there, as we grow the tons, it's going to show that it's gravy. Um, yeah, so summary, good zinc market, Eric's talked about. Um, now a world-class project, and I'm not afraid of using that term. Uh, news flow that's really going to drive value an evaluation that cannot be ignored. Thank you.